Hey everyone, it's Dallas. Sorry for the delay, but we're going to decode the final trailer for Only Murders in the Building, Season 4. And afterwards, I'm going to share a theory I have about a possible plot point for the season. The trailer starts with the trio recording an episode of the podcast. When the lights go out, they're wearing the same outfits that they wore on opening night. So I'm assuming that this takes place the opening night of the play and they're likely closing on the third season of the podcast revealing who killed Ben Glenroy. While they're recording, the lights go out. So I'm thinking this could possibly be the killer using the lights out as a way to circumvent some type of security within the Arconia. A little later on, we get Eva talking to Mabel, saying that they arrived in New York and that they want to do some character studying you know, follow them around to see how they act in order to get into their characters. But what's interesting is that Mabel tells Eva that there is a new murder and Eva is excited. And you can see Detective Williams in the background and the murder board. There seems to be a little bit of retroactive work going on. It seems as if that the trio found out about the people wanting to make a movie about their podcast they flew to L.A. and then came back for the opening night of Death Rattle Dazzle. So at the point at the end of season three, the trio technically have already met their counterparts and knew everything about it. That's what it seems like. It's the only logical reason I can see for this happening. And it is a little bit retroactive. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but we have seen them go back in time during previous seasons. Uh, season three, we went back to when Ben Glenroy and the whole cast met for the first time for their table read. And even in season two, we went back in time and saw the last day of Bunny. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, but I feel like it's a little bit bigger information and things that we think, well, I think that we would have seen them talk about within that small time frame in the last episode or so of the last season, if that's what's going on. One of the big things of every season is the murder board. So I'm going to go over some things that I've seen on it that may be of note. From left to right, there's quite a bit here. Some of it's a little redundant, as I said, but of note, there's a section labeled people who hate Charles. Now, this is a long list, but it is too small to see or be able to read. The board also questions if Charles was the target, linking him with people or things that he and Saz had in common. This of course includes Jan and Cookie. Those are the big ones and who they think likely might have something to do with it. There is also a query, a note that asks if the killer is a hunter. This is something that I've mentioned before that the type of person who has this likely has hunting or military background. It's not him, it's just a easy throwaway red herring. One of the most interesting things that's also on the board is this flyer that says it's all building meeting and that they're trying to stop the trio from filming the movie in the Arconia. So it seems as if at least a part of the movie is going to be at the Arconia or filmed there and that there is production people going to be in the building and everyone that lives there is not having it and they want to stop the trio and the movie from being made there further ruining their lives. I'm hoping that it means we'll see some more of the tenants that we didn't see too much of in the last season. People like Nina Lynn, Stanley, since they're going into the lives of people on the West Tower, maybe some of the people on the East Tower knows more about these people and they'll talk to them. Regarding about the location that the killer shot says from there is a note that says there was a footprint. There's a picture of a lockbox and a six digit combination. There's mentions of paint chips and a window that was painted shut and was pried open. I'm going to come back to that because I think it is very important and telling of a possible plot point. Of course, I'm thinking that this is the room that the killer used. There is a card that says, Christmas All the Time Guide's reference to Kamal Nanjiani's character, whose name is Rudy. At the bottom, there are pictures of multiple suspects. Um, some of them are people that we've seen 
our cast this season. A lot of the younger people that were stated to be added to the cast this season are playing people who live in the West Tower. The names Alfonso, Inez, Anna, and Richard Kind's character, Vince Fish. I think he's going to be a little bit more integral to the plot. I think he's going to be one of the big red herrings, but I don't think it will actually be him. Last on the board, there is a note that says, Westie's group photo, Lady X out. This isn't the photo, it's just a note that says, Westie's group photo. So it sounds as if there is a group photo from friends who live on the West End, West Side, West Tower besties, Westies, and someone in that group has been X out of the photo. And have an idea about who she is, tell you that later at the end of the video. But that's everything that I've seen in the murder board. There are some other things that happen in the trailer, so let's get to those. We see the trio looking through what appears to be Charles' window, and we see them looking at Vince Fish, and he's got this mean mug look on his face. But uh, we, it kind of zooms into his background and he has the room type that I assumed that he would, that a red herring would. They're going to have someone with dark, rustic, earthy toned vibes in the room, like a hunter or a really manly man, the type of person will have like antlers on their mantle. He's 100% going to be the type of person that would be a hunter and they are going to think, yes, he is the person especially because of his overall demeanor, but it's not him. Also, Kamal Nanjiani's character, Rudy, you see him and he looks, he's like lifted weights. He has Christmas decorations all around in his house. I'm guessing that he just loves Christmas and it's Christmas all the time. I don't believe either one of them are a viable suspect. There may have been some things that happened with these people and Charles or Oliver in the past, but we'll find that out as the season goes on. A little later in the trailer, Mabel pulls off police tape from a door. That door letter is F. I've looked at layouts and I could not tell where F would be, but I am assuming this is on the West Tower and this is where the killer was. And then what's throwing a lot of people off, we see this lady, what appears to be a lady because of her frame and this snazzy outfit she's got on wide leg or like bell bottom pants, really cool outfit and even has matching shoelaces and she's holding a rifle outside of the window. I don't think this is the killer, but I do think that she is important to the story, and I'll explain a little bit later. Right after that, we get a shot of inside the apartment that the shooter was located in. We see detectives, it's really dingy. It's got a small bed on it, almost looks like old army bed or something. And there are police there, they pull up a casing or cartridge for a high caliber round. But this room looks dingy, dirty, not looking like as if anyone of any substance would be living there at this time. We then see the trio, Charles thinking that he is the person they were after. So they go to his sister's place in Long Island played by Melissa McCarthy. Very strange, but a really funny. Kind of looked like she might've been flirting with Oliver a little bit little upset that I was wrong. She's not playing Bunny and Kamal Nanjiani is playing Rudy and not Arnoff. Uh, not only does the trio go to Melissa's house, but also their counterparts meet them there because we see them there later in the trailer. This looks like Loretta at his sister's house. We see dolls in the background of the shot. So I don't know the reason all of these people would be leaving the Arconia or wherever they're coming from. I don't even know why Loretta's in the area, maybe to see her boo thing, Oliver. Theory time, theory time, theory time, theory time, theory time, theory time. Now I mentioned that the Westies group photo has a lady X'd out on it. Hear me out here. I'm hoping this isn't anything anyone's thought of before. But what if the lady who was crossed out of the photo is the same lady that we see in the short clip holding the rifle. I think that in the past, likely in the 70s, there was a lady who did kill people in the Arconia or attempted to, and that's why she's been X'd out of the picture. I believe that that happened in that apartment and it was either closed down, given up, or no one's lived in there since. That's why 
there was no furniture in there. Windows was painted shut because she literally used that window to try kill people in the building. I believe that's why we see some clips of Oliver in this very 70s, 60s, 70s retro style clothing and a small, small spoiler in a leaked photo, not a leaked photo, but a set photo, we see Richard Kind in similar coloring. I believe that this person might have even shot Richard Kind's character, Vince Fish, and that's why he only has one eye. He might have been shot in the head, but somehow survived. Maybe this lady was going after him. Maybe there was going after just people indiscriminately, but he was caught in the crossfire. So there was a lady in the 70s likely who tried or did kill people at the Arconia. She's been exed out of the friends because of what she did and her room was closed off. Whoever this current killer is knew of this past story and went to that same room. That's why no one's been using it. So I think the original killer or attempted killer in the Arconia, whoever that was, whatever their motivation was, this killer knew of that story. So the original person from the 70s motivation is likely tied to whatever the one is now. What we see of Oliver in those bright colors, Vince in these bright colors, and the lady on the windowsill is likely Oliver or someone else telling us the story about what happened years ago. He probably forgot about it and then was like, oh yeah, this happened here years ago. This was the same room. Just an idea. But I think it kind of tracks. Did this person have the key to the apartment? Or is it like a relative? Either way, whoever this is, they had to either be a current resident or likely a past resident in order to know what room this happened in, who it was, and things of that nature. But only time will tell. Let me know what you guys thought about this trailer. Do you have any ideas? of what would be going on. Do you think that little theory I have holds any weight? I will mention that if they do release the episode titles at least two days before the season starts, I'm going to try and get out a video about that, about the titles and what they could possibly mean. Thank all of you guys for watching. I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight for this next season. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Dallas and I'll catch you on the rooftop. Thank you.